from this video today, you're going to get some super helpful tips for making your rats happier and healthier just by making some simple changes to their environment. Most of these things can be done for free and they will make them so much happier mentally and physically. And I'm also going to briefly explain the science behind each of these facts so that you can know that they are true facts about rats and not just things I'm guessing from my own experience. Each of the articles I refer to will be linked in the article below down in the description. Aerie wants you to go ahead and like this video and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you don't miss future videos from us covering these same kinds of useful topics. So right now, most of the rats that are kept as pets are the domesticated rat, sometimes also called the fancy rat. And while we have this breed of rats now, originally they were just wild rats. And the closer that we're able to mimic their natural environment, the happier and healthier they will be because the, their bodies are meant to eat a certain way and act a certain way based on the environment that they are naturally from. And the closer we're able to replicate that, the happier they're going to be in our domesticated environments. So one way that we can do this is to give them a variety of food types for foraging. So it's important to give them a, mostly a diet of a healthy, formula, a scientifically formulated food specifically for rats. That should be a significant portion of their diet, but we can also give them lots of what we call healthy human foods, which would be veggies, a little bit of fruit, some greens, maybe a little bit of cooked chicken and other cooked um, meats and things from time to time, but especially those veggies and a little bit of fruit. Those are the best things. Also a little bit of whole wheat bread sometimes can be, or whole wheat pasta, things like that can be fun for them to chew on and just exciting. Like if you had to eat the same thing every day, it would get boring. But what these guys like to do is have a variety of things. So we, we want to feed them mostly what is the healthiest formulated diet for them and then give them maybe about 20% um, other healthy human foods. And in the first article linked down below, scientists found of 173 rats that they studied in the wild, none of them had only eaten one food type. They'd all eaten more than one. And nearly all of them had eaten at least four food types, which with the average being eight or more different types of food um, within a day, because rats naturally are foragers. They're very curious. They naturally find lots of different kinds of foods to eat. And if we give them all their food in a food dish, then it's not really interesting because they just can eat it all at once and it's all the same stuff. And that's just, that's really boring. But if we can give them some healthy stuff in things like foraging toys, which I'll link to a video up um, in the cards so you can see our foraging toys video, some great ways you can make free foraging toys out of items you already have around your house. By mixing up their different kinds of food and giving them in foraging toys instead of just in food bowls, um, that actually makes their lives more interesting and more fun. And where animals can sometimes go a little bit crazy in captivity because they get bored, because we don't know or we, we don't realize that they need more things to do with all their time. Um, when we're able to give them foraging toys and a variety of food, it just stimulates their brain and makes them so much more excited about life. And, you know, so much healthier. I hear somebody playing with a foraging toy right now. Somebody's got one. <laughs> Another way that we can keep our rats happier and healthier just by simple changes in their environment is to give them more things to do in their cage. I know my cage is looking a little sparse right now because all the foraging toys in there were loud. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you what I had in there in a minute, but I had to take those out for the video because everybody was having a good old time rattling papers and making a lot of noise. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, but in this other study, that is the second article linked down below, um, in a laboratory, 12 rats were given the option to choose between different enclosures. So they had, I'm just reading my notes here to make sure I give you guys the exact correct information. Um, they had one cage where they were given unlimited access to food. food. Tons of food was there. It was free, easy to get to. No, they didn't have to do anything to get to the food. Um, they also had a cage with gnawing sticks in it and a cage with a limited access food hopper, so they could only get a little bit of food at a time and it was a little bit more challenging to get to. And um, also a cage with a foraging device. So of all of these options, all 12 of the rats spent the least amount of time in the cage where the food was the easiest to get to. 
because it's boring in theory because it's boring um, but we can see from this study that actually all the rats spent more time in the cages where the food was more challenging to get to or where there were gnawing sticks that they could chew on even though they weren't getting food from that they weren't getting nourishment but it was chewing on something it was something a natural behavior for them to do all the rats would rather do those challenging things to get to food and to be active than to have that free food that's available there just for free for no effort. They actually would prefer to be challenged and have something fun and stimulating to their brain to do. Based on these studies and countless others, zoos and laboratories and veterinary clinics all over the world have come to the conclusion that the more we can give them to do in their cage, the more enrichment we can give them and the more we can have their food set up as foraging toys rather than just boring old food bowls, the happier and healthier they'll be, even just their mental health. It might sound funny to say that rats have mental health, but they do. And they're, you know, psychologically, they're so much happier when they have more things to do with their time. So what does a more enriched, fun, active environment look like in a regular rat cage at home? I'm going to show you up on the screen right now a few examples of some amazing cages by some of my fellow rat owners. So this first cage you can see here is by at posh pampered rats. They've included fun things such as plenty of hammocks and other fleece hides, wine racks for them to climb through, plastic baskets affixed to the wall for them to explore, and even they've removed the middle grate in their double critter nation so that there's more ability to climb up and down greater heights. And now let's look at this one by the boho rat with logs, tunnels, balls, baskets, even some plants. Now many types of plants are not safe to be in the cage with rats, so do your research before giving them access to plants. I don't keep plants in my rat cages myself. So things you can add include hammocks, wine racks, cardboard, hides, jute ropes, hay hides, oat hay, bird perches, packing paper, foraging toys, there's no end to the variety of things you can put in their cage. And so many things are safe for rats. Although if you're not sure whether it's safe, it's best to research it first rather than to guess. Some additional things that I normally have in my rat cage besides hammocks and a little blanket that they can roll around in. Um, you can see here they're playing with a foraging toy in the back. And um, I'm linking up above that um, foraging toy video again in case you missed it earlier. When this video is over, go check that out because there's lots of great ways to make super easy and free foraging toys like these little envelopes with food in them. I bet Ari will take one. Check this out. Yum! So there's there's food rolled up in that little paper towel. So I would normally give them some of these every day and I've got some recyclable boxes, some shipping paper, and a paper bag that they can tear up and hide in and make nests out of. Hi, Munchkin. I'm going to close this, okay? Excuse you. To even further enhance the fun and mental stimulation for your rats, you can arrange these things differently, either on a daily basis or at least every time you clean the cage. So I'll hang up my different hammocks in different places throughout the cage. There's another layer down here that you can't see with the camera angle because um, it's a double critter nation. So I'll hang up these things in different places and um, make different like tied hammocks in different places. I'll hide their food in different places. Sometimes I put their food in foraging toys. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of food in each one of these little holes in this one. Sometimes I'll put some food on top of their hammocks, all different places. Sometimes I'll bury some. Um, you know, in some of, in their blanket up here and things like that. So always doing a little bit in different places so that it's always exciting when they find it versus it being boring when they find it in the exact same place all the time. That's not as stimulating as finding it in different places. Sometimes not finding it in one place and then finding it in an unexpected place. So now that we've covered enrichment of the cage, let's talk a little bit more about foraging. So what is foraging? In the wild, animals would look for their food all throughout the day versus eating it all at once out of a little bowl or having free feed access to a bowl. Some animals do need free feed access because they're grazers and they would normally eat all throughout the day. And it's good for rats to always have access to food, um, but 
not always just in a bowl because that is a little bit less interesting. You know what? You could try actually putting food in a bowl and also putting food in foraging toys and see whether they destroy the foraging toys and eat that food first or whether they finish that food in the food bowl first, especially once they've figured out how to use the foraging toys. Because sometimes it takes them a little bit to figure it out if they've never been exposed to them before. Um, you may have to help them a little bit, but I'm telling you, they're going to really enjoy those foraging toys once you start giving them those instead. And foraging is actually something that accredited zoos are required to do for all of their animals. Most zoos are not actually allowed to have food bowls in the cage, except for in the case of like a sick animal that might need easier access to food. Generally, um, food is hidden up high for animals that climb. It's buried for animals that burrow. It's hidden in foraging toys that hang. It's hidden all over the place. And um, people with zoo experience have a really great understanding for why foraging toys are so important for the mental health of the animals that are stuck living in a cage that's just a lot smaller than their natural environment would be. So in addition to the variety of foraging toys, they've already carried off all the ones I put in there earlier. <laughs> in addition to the foraging toys, like the one Hedda has back here, the toilet paper roll she's biting into, in addition to those, and the paper towel toys that I talked about making in um, that other video that I recommended checking out, you can also get foraging toys from the pet store. Sometimes they don't really market them for rats as much as for birds, but most foraging toys that are for birds also work great for rats. I'll flash up on the screen now this great foraging toy that's actually marketed for birds that at Ratty Rat Bags is using for her rats. If you look in this picture, look at all the greens and the veggies and all the yummy healthy human foods that are pictured up in there. That um, That is a really great option for foraging. It's not necessarily very complicated. They don't have to like solve any puzzles or break anything apart to get to it, but it is something that hangs. They might have, if you hang it up, um, not so high that it's unsafe, but high enough that they have to, you know, go to a little extra effort to get to it, that can make it more interesting for them. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure you give it a like so YouTube knows this is a useful video to show to other people with rats that are looking for this kind of information. And be sure to click the, the subscribe button and also the bell icon, because if you hit the subscribe button, they won't always show you our videos. But if you hit the bell icon, then YouTube will be sure to show you whenever we have a new video out so you don't miss it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week with some more great critter tips and tricks. Bye.